I'm joined by my colleague Jade Warshaw. We're here for you this hour, America. It's a free phone call to jump in. 888-825-5225. 888-825-5225. Jade looking fabulous as always today. I try, Ken. You, you sir, are looking quite dapper yourself. All right. Very nice. Enough of the uh, niceties. That's you ready right. to help these fine Let's folks? Let's do it. Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. Marissa joins us in Annapolis, Maryland. Marissa, how can we help? Hi, um, I just want to say thank you for taking my call. Um, I just want to make it known I'm brand new to all your teachings. Literally last night I was gifted um, by two of my really good church friends with uh, financial peace. And um, I actually just got set up for um, George's class. That's today. great. I just had my first oh my lesson. Goodness. Well, yeah, that's so. fun. You're going to love George, by the way. It's going to be great. So we're glad to have you on the show. What's going on? Yeah, so... Um, my question is, how do I zero in on the type of job I should be looking for? And just to give a little background, I just graduated with my master's. Um, I have an undergraduate degree in communication studies. Mm-hmm. I got my master's in community-based education and leadership. And I just feel like I have no idea what opportunities I should be pursuing or what opportunities would fit me. Okay. Well, I think we need to pull back from opportunities first, because that is focused on what you see directly in front of you, and that can be very intimidating. Let's just talk about why you got into that direction, because those are very, very specific areas of opportunity connected to those majors. So is that the space you want to be in, the type of work you want to be doing? I mean, yes, I'm honestly pretty open to anything, which is hard, even going into college um, I was a student athlete. I played softball um, in college, and going into college, I was still super unsure of what I wanted okay. to pursue when it came to education. Okay. But in communications, in the master's program I um, did, I, I did enjoy it, and I see myself going into that direction for sure. Okay. Well, the reason I ask is I want to know how passionate you were maybe about a problem or a group of people attached to a problem, because all work is either solution-based or desire-based. In other words, uh, I'm giving a solution to a problem or I am meeting someone's desire. And so what you've got to do is, is when you're looking for ideas and how to pick a direction, it all needs to be connected to two specific things. One is, what is that problem or desire that's connected to a people group that I go, I want to work to be a part of that? And then secondly, where does my unique talent, my abilities to come in and be a part of that problem? That's where we ideate. And I just have done this so much. I got a feeling, Marissa, that you have a couple of ideas that are at the top of your mind. They kind of float up there whenever you think about, what is it that I really want to try? Is that true or false? That that's definitely true. All right, give me give me the top one or two. So I would say the first one is I want to be able to help people um, that voices aren't typically heard, um, hmm. whether that's high school students, college students, whether it's um, more of the older generation. I just have a passion for helping people in any sort of circumstances. All right, now let's be more specific. Okay. When you said vo- their voices aren't heard, go deeper, go a couple level levels deeper and don't worry about how it sounds. It's just me and Jade. Okay. What, 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 okay. what, what are the problems of those people? What, what, what has happened to them? What is their circumstance that pulls your heart in? Be more specific. You can give me a couple examples if you want. Yeah. Um, so once again, being a student athlete, um, I feel like a lot of people have their own like stigmas or their own perceptions on what it is to be um, an athlete, uh, whether that's high school, college, professional, whatever it may be. And I feel like a lot of the times, yes, our voices can be heard, but a lot of times they're overlooked, um, whether that's with, um, well, from my personal experience, academics, mental health, um, stuff in that area. Um mm-hmm. So this is coming from your own journey. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, so who helped you? Who helped you overcome some of those challenges? Mindset stuff, academic stuff, maybe a coach overlooking something. You didn't feel you were getting a shot. Who helped you? 
Yeah, I would definitely say the people in my community when it comes to, like, my church, Mm -hmm. um, definitely one of my closest friends, her name's Kylie. Mm -hmm. Um, She actually pursued me into knowing who Jesus was, Mm -hmm. and that definitely set my the base of my life and um, how I overcame a lot of things when it came to being rooted in Christ. Mm -hmm. So I would say um, through that or my mentors, um, when I did this, I was a part of this group called Young Life. So those are the people that helped me the most. So here's what I'm hearing. And the times where I needed it. So what I'm hearing is, is that you've always had an interest in communication. You're probably pretty good at communicating. You're certainly good on the air, Mm -hmm. but you have the ability to connect with people. And if I went and talked to people who know you really well, they would say Marissa's always been good at connecting with people. She's she's good at communicating. And I think you have a heart for people who feel a little bit lost, a little bit down. They've got some self-worth stuff going on, whether it be mental or emotional. uh, And and you want to be that guide to help them see themselves as they should see themselves and believe in themselves and overcome that hurdle. That's what I'm hearing. How does that sound to you when, when I repeat it back to you? Yeah, I would say that's pretty spot on. All right. So I'm sitting next to a former D1 athlete who competed at a high level, okay? And, and the reason I want to bring you in here, Jade, is because I, I, I want to hand the baton to you because I see a potential coach mm-hmm. that we're talking to, a teacher, a guidance counselor, yeah. maybe a therapist. I see the heart of a coach, regardless of the profession. What are you hearing? What are you seeing? I agree. It almost sounds like you want to come in and be sort of a liaison or some sort of a a counselor for a team or for a group of folks. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what that look, looks like. I don't know if that's you coaching a team and you just have those qualities that you offer as a coach um, and it's just part of who you are as a coach or if it's something where you're approaching teams and saying, hey, um, here are likely some problems that your teammates are facing. I'd love to come in, mm. just do a little workshop, do something to where you're meeting those people where they're at and you're offering that value um, to the team as a whole because a healthy team is going to be yeah. a more successful team. I love it. So that's really interesting. I love it. So Marissa, I've got a homework assignment and a gift for you. The homework assignment is I want you to seek out a teacher, any level, I don't care what level, uh, a guidance counselor, a a therapist, counselor, uh, coaches, and I want you to spend time with them and talk about the ins and outs of what they do, what they love, what they don't love, uh, and, and just see what your heart begins to select. And I think that's the process you need. I'm going to give you my book, The Proximity Principle, which will help you with that specifically. And then my assessment, the Get Clear Assessment. You need to take that. I think it's going to further help you define mm-hmm. some ideas. Thank you, Marissa. You're, you're, you're an athlete. You're a champion. Believe that. You're going to find your path. This is The Ramsey Show. Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by a hundred if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey, and it will make a difference for your business, too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey.
Welcome back, America. You are joining the conversation about your life, specifically your money, your work, your relationships here on The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined by Jade Warshaw this hour. The phone number to jump in is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. So we have people tune into every episode of this show, and uh, they all know the stuff we teach about money, but they're still feeling stressed out, stuck behind that eight ball of debt, if you will. Why? Because knowing what to do with your money isn't enough. You have to do something about it. Personal finance is 80% behavior and only 20% head knowledge. And the proven way to change your behavior is by taking Financial Peace University. This class is different because um, we we, we, we walk you through the step-by-step interactive way to win. And it's the difference between trying to get in shape on your own versus hiring a personal trainer. You'll have a coordinator holding you accountable and other people in the class cheering you on. That's why this class has worked for millions of people. After nine weeks, you'll never handle money the same way again. Don't just listen to the show. Commit to doing what we talk about Mm. on the show to win. Join an FPU class at RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. That's RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. I think I'm like week five or six uh, coming up Wednesday night, uh, it'll be uh, Lesson 6, actually. Uh, oh, the wow. The class that I'm coordinating, you just wrapped up another class. I did, and I know George is George smack is about dab ready to start. It. He's about ready to start. Okay. So very fun stuff. Personal trainer. There you go. <laughs> That's the only time I'll be compared to a personal <laughs> trainer, all right? We'll just leave it Shoot at Shoot your that. shot, Ken. Thank you. Thank you, Jade. Uh, Avery's up next in Philadelphia. Avery, how can we help? Hey, um, thanks for taking my call. Sure. I feel like I, I have a uh, kind of a unique situation, um, and I listen to you guys regularly, so I might have an idea of where we're going to, you know, what you'll say. But <laughs> basically, I have a student loan, um, student loan debt that's 17, and then I ha- just bought a truck, and I have a car loan that's 50000 So right now, I have, I have no interest on anything um, because the car loan – I'm paying it off. I'll have it paid off in four years, and there's zero interest on that. And then the student loan, because of the student debt stuff with Biden and or whatever, um, that's there's no interest there. Um, for now. Now, for now, correct. I have all, I have the money in the bank, and I could pay off and be debt free today. Why don't you? Um, so there's no interest, or, and the next thing I want to do in life is is buy a house. Um, so the money that I have, you know, I have all that money in the bank. But yeah, I'm, but you're I'm not, not going to, you wouldn't buy a house while you still have all of this debt laying around, right? That well, feels like a recipe for yeah, well, stress. Yeah. So my kind of my the reason, I guess, for the call is because there's no interest. It's not costing me anything, I guess. There's no interest occurring on Sure it is. Lo- you know, on the debt. What's uh-huh. your combined payment on the truck and the student loans? Uh, the truck's 1100 and then um, the student loan that's, is, say, 300 Hey. All right, so that's $1,400 a month. That's what it's costing you. <laughs> it's costing you $1,400 a month in payments. That's what it's costing you. And so, it's costing you right now to have to choose between paying off this debt or doing something you really, really want to do, which is buy a house, it sounds like. So... That's what that's the cost right there. So okay, so your move would be go debt free today, um, and that would take my you know, I, and I'd, I'd have money to survive, obviously. But no, no, bro. So, whoa, so whoa, exactly, whoa, whoa, whoa. you would have fourteen hundred dollars more per month in your budget. The Correct. minute you pay it off, you just got a fourteen hundred dollar a month raise. Do you not understand that? I, yeah, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. So let's walk, let's walk it through so you can kind of understand the method behind the madness. Cause I know for you, you're like, these people are crazy. Let me tell you what it means. Okay. So you said you've got the 17,000 of student loan debt, 50,000 cars. And what, what was the third debt? There, there's no third debt. Okay. It's just those two. Yeah. And how much money total do you have laying around in savings? Um, also, I want to know about non-retirement investments. Do you have anything like that? Um, so basically, um, for the, in- the investment, I put in, um, $500 a month towards like a Roth IRA. 
Okay, that's retirement um, investing. Do you have any non retire I'm just trying to see how much cash you have laying around or ca- um, money you can no, get to. So no, I don't do any um, other investment other than that. Okay, so how much total cash do you have sitting around? Um, basically, so if I did it all, I would have like 10000 left over. No, how much so, cash right yeah, now do you have yeah. sitting around? I think it's like, say, $70,000. Seventy thousand dollars. Look at that. She My almost dog. raised her voice. She almost raised her Look, voice. Look, I'm no, I'm excited because you're gonna be debt free. Yeah. Okay. You've got sixty seven thousand okay. dollars of debt and you've got seventy thousand in cash, which means we're gonna set aside right off the bat. Here's what I'm doing here. I'm working through our baby steps. So I'm setting aside a thousand dollars right off the bat, just as a just quick emergency fund. It's not the be all end all. It's just for a moment because you're going to use the rest of that money to pay off your debt. And then you're still going to have $2,000 left over to put, to add to that savings so that over time you can make it three to six months of savings and think how quickly you're going to stack that up because you just cleared up all of this money in payments, $1,400 a month in payments you've just cleared up. So think how quickly you're going to stack back to three to six months of emergency fund. Maybe you want to stack back the 70 K. I don't know. And then after that, we're going into baby step 3B, which is saving for that down payment for a house. Now, with all of your income cleared up, no more debt, you could save this up so fast. And then you go into home ownership and it's like, oh, I can breathe. I don't have this debt weighing down on me. Who cares if it's 0% interest? It's still a weight, you know, tied to your ankle, mm-hmm. right? What, what, what do you right. think about this, Avery? Well... But yeah, I, I'm, it's kind of unique, and I've now long time listener, and uh, my dad and I, you know, he got me into Dave Ramsey and all that. Um, it, I, I guess it's like the way I look at it, and this is why I wanted to get your perspective is mm-hmm. because there's no there's no interest, it's not costing me. Look, oh my look, gosh, Avery, it is. It's Avery. costing you fourteen hundred dollars <laughs> a Avery. month. Avery, all right, let's go back to what let's go back to where Jade left off. You've been listening to us for a long time, so you know what the baby steps are. Yeah, but okay. Ken, the problem is he wants to keep this debt. Of course. Well, he wants. Yeah, he, he wants. Yeah, he wants the safety of the house. He wants all that right now. Avery, if you want to keep your debt, we can't help you. Yeah, I guess it's. I guess That's my hesitation is, is is doing. You know, I guess writing that. that big no, no, check. yeah, hundred percent. Avery, be, Avery, yeah, then I would be clear. Avery, you're scared to let go of the seventy thousand or sixty seven or whatever it is, sixty eight right now, and only have two or three thousand dollars in your emergency it, fund. But listen, how many months is it going to take you to save up three to six months' expenses? What's your take home? Give it to me real quick. Um, I work for myself, so it kind of depends, but just say roughly I'm bringing in, so I make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay, great. Okay. So three to six months of that, if with this new $1,400 raise, you're going to give yourself as, as Jade walked you through this, you're going to be able to save up for that quickly. Then you have nothing to worry about. You have a man, very man. healthy emergency, fund. then you save for the house, mm-hmm. but you still got all that margin. $1,100 truck payment on a depreciating asset. Someone has sold you. Uh, what is really just bad math about, well, it's 0% interest. You're getting this money for free. But your truck is depreciating very quickly, mm-hmm. and you're paying $1,100 a month for four years, and you think that's a good plan? Versus, versus what, four to six months? You getting your emergency fund where it needs to be? Yes or no? Four to six yeah, months? I, I, I think you're correct. Yeah. I know. And now let's uh, gotta do the push, right? Honestly, look at the look at the basic math of this. If you have seventy thousand dollars of cash, but you have sixty seven thousand dollars of debt, you don't really have seventy thousand dollars of cash. It's fake money. Correct. It's a fake feeling of, you know, it's just that basic uh, balance sheet, right? At the end of the day, you got $3,000 to your name. That's the truth of the matter. And that's the thing that you need to focus on. You don't have $70,000, Avery. You got $3,000. The money is costing you almost $1,500 a month. Oh, that makes my stomach hurt. I'm going to pause for a moment, <laughs> get some Pepsi AC, a few commercials, and we'll be right back. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, Dr. John Deloney here. 
I'm a huge fan of both meditation and prayer. And good mental health includes slowing down, gaining control of your thoughts, and plugging into something bigger than you. And Hallow makes it easy to start a daily practice of meditation, prayer, and finding peace. Hallow is the number one Bible app in the world, and you can tailor content towards your faith tradition. From scripture readings and prayers to meditation and journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice prayer, meditate, and build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life and rediscover true peace. Go to hallow.com slash Ramsey today to get three months of Hallow for free. That's hallow.com slash Ramsey. You are joining the conversation about your life here on The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague Jade Warshaw and uh, special, special guest. It gets two specials. If you were watching the show right now, you see a very, very cool-looking, handsome stud uh, to my, to my, uh, I guess, to my a... left. Your left. And you're thinking, Ken would never, ever be able to hang out with somebody like that in real life. Some might call him a snack, a Ken. Sa- oh, really? <laughs> I yeah. feel very weird about calling him a snack. I'll be honest. Well, Sam I can call him that. Jade's better half. I don't know if I'm supposed to Ooh, say that either. That's the first time I've ever been called the better half. I'm only doing it because you're on the show. No one believes for a second that. She's that the you're better, better half. But I believe you can call him a snack. Yes, I can. <laughs> but I, on the other hand, I'm going to stay away from that. Uh, but he's in here for a reason, and uh, you know we've been we've been hearing from you, the people, uh, about this economy that we're in, where people are making more money. Mm-hmm. But Jade, you know this. Things cost a whole lot more money. Inflation Look, has been stubborn. Those grocery bills, uh, everything bills. Today's are a prices bit are higher. not yesterday's prices. That's exactly right. And so, what we've seen, Jade, as a result of this, is we've seen the gig economy, mm-hmm. uh, which is a new way of saying the side hustle economy. Maybe I drive a little bit of Uber, I do some delivery, I do yeah. a lot of different things. We're seeing the freelance economy for white collar workers. Mm-hmm. But let, and I'll give you one example maybe a programmer who can obviously do some high end programming. Mm-hmm. Uh, there they're getting contract work uh, through freelance because companies are uh, not as excited about offering a full-time salary when they can get you at a contract level. So right. all that said, the side hustle is a big search engine thing right now. People want to know, what can I do? How can I do it? Because I want some extra money. And so Come we on. were talking about this, and and this guy to my left, uh, he's a stud in a lot of ways, uh, but you guys figured out the side hustle thing, and he's got a really cool gig uh, as a side hustle. So I wanted you to set that up, and then I'm going to ask him how he got there, because I think our team, our audience can learn something from him. Yeah, people want to know how to do this. And you know, a lot of folks know our story. We paid off $460,000 of debt. And that wasn't just with our, you know, mm-hmm. day-to-day income. We did a lot of side hustles. And our mantra early on was instead of going, now I'm not poo-pooing this because you do what you got to do. But for us, instead of going out and doing the Ubers and the DoorDashes yeah. and the Instacarts, we were like, I feel like we can take our skills and make more money doing things that we enjoy doing that are already um, a commodity for other people. We yeah. can offer services. So it was anything from dog training to Sam was designing websites and both of us were teaching lessons. I did voice lessons. Sam did, you know, piano and guitar lessons. And um, out of that came this idea that, hey, like we can set our own hours, we can make money. And in, during the pandemic, you know, everything was shut down. Us being an entertainment, everything was shut down. And uh, <laughs> Sam came up to me, he goes, hey, I know that we're watching every dollar right now, but do you think that we can arrange for me to pull $170 out of the budget because I have a side hustle that I want to invest in. And I'm like, oh boy, you know, Mm -hmm. everything's shut down. I'm like, Mm -hmm. you want to do $170 for what? And he's like, Jade, I want to sell, I want to resell Jordans. Like Jordan tennis shoes. Air Jordan sneakers if you're over 50, tennis shoes if you're, I don't know if you call them shoes, basketball shoes. Sneakers. Sneakers, Sneakers, thank you. 
Oh, sneaker still works for the youngsters. That is what. That's what the they're youngster, calling it. Yeah, tennis right. shoes is a. Show, show you how. Yeah. I, oh, so I flipped it. Yeah, you flipped it. Yeah, it shows you how <laughs> in touch I am with the youth. <laughs> so, uh, so what did you think when he first throws at? I want to resell Air Jordans and Jordans and all this stuff. Look, I'm not. Sam can do anything. Like he's he's not a guy that lets you down. Like he's a person who. Even if I don't know how to do it, Jade, I'm going to figure out how to do it. So when he said that, at first, because money was funny during the pandemic, sure. I was like, um, at first I was like, I don't know. But then I was like, you know what? It's Sam. Yes. Go so do you, it. that's all you did. Yes. You, you just said, in Sam, I trust. And in you Sam, didn't I ask trust. questions. Okay. So I, Sam. No, I was like, come tell me when you make some money. Well, right. <laughs> but I love that you didn't ask a bunch of questions like, what's it going to cost? What's your margins? She didn't do any of that. But well, you he's, had, a, he, he, he's savvy I know on he's that sharp. stuff. So, okay. How did you get the idea? This is what I want people to hear. Because you were doing lots of different things mm -hmm. and it comes to you. All right. I, I want to do this. I think I should do this. Okay. Let me back up. I didn't come to you with the idea in 2020. I came in 2019, the end of 2019. And, and I'm saying this because... Oh, this could get awkward. Uh, I don't know. Go ahead. I'm because in 2019, I, I came with the idea. I said, hey, I need 170 bucks. Yeah. I just want to try this. Yeah. And I, I bought a pair of Jordans for retail and I sold them the next day for $900. Woo! I made like 750 bucks. It just, I couldn't believe it. I was shocked. And so now fast forward to 2020, you know, for the next year or 18 months, I, I kept trying to do that over and over, basically like win the lottery. Okay. And that's not how it works. Right. And one day Jade and I were talking and she was like, dude, you're trying to be the hare, not the tortoise. And I realized that I just had struck lightning one time. And then I really needed to figure out how this thing actually works. And that's when I really got into right. it. But now were you, why did you initially like the idea? Um, I've just, it's one of those things when I was a kid, I loved Jordans right. and I figured if I want to buy Jordans, what's a, what's a better way to buy them without spending like right. your own yeah. normal budget money right. than resell them yeah. and spend that money. So instead of house flipping, you're a Jordan flipper. Yeah. That's what you I did. mean, on the side for fun. Right. Yeah. So, okay. So now we've got the right timeline. Yeah. All right. And so now she says you need to be the tortoise. What did that yeah. look like? So that looked like me going to... Uh, so I had like $800 in this account that I had made. I piddled it all away trying to right. figure out other things. What that looked like once I decided to be the tortoise, I basically had 170 bucks again. I'd go to Nike outlets and I'd buy anything that there was a profit margin on. Even if it was like $10. Yeah. If, if I, I told myself, if I can make a 10% profit on mm -hmm. this shoe, I don't care if it's $5, that's a win. Right, and if I can make five dollars a hundred times, that's five hundred. So then bucks. you just started doing this, started stacking the money, and started now you stacking figured the money. it out. Yes, I figured it out. The hard part, the discipline, is you can't spend any of that money. You just have to keep flipping it, keep flipping it, right. um, until you do have profit. Until you do have profit that you can pull out of it, you know, to right. then use. And the more profit you have, then you could buy a little bit more expensive shoe right. and then have higher margin. Exactly. So then I stopped going to the outlets. I started going to the retail stores. And you know, a lot of people, what you'll see online is a lot of people are trying to um, uh, basically win these draws. Right. I was going to the mall, doing the hard work. Right. I went to the mall every day for 60 so, days straight. So give me a percentage. What kind of margins are you making now on Jordans? It just depends on the shoe, but... Well, it also depends on your customer because right. that's a big part is using your network. Yeah. Proximity principle Come kicked on. in big time. So, so now you I got went people from, coming to you. Yeah. I got a lot of people coming to me and, you know, we're musicians. So I got a lot of artists and athletes, pro athletes and stuff coming to me. And so those shoes have a bigger margin. So I can make a hundred or 200 percent right. on that shoe. Do you shoe. guys mind? Can we share with the audience yeah. what kind of money you're making on the side just in this? When he, within a... Within a year of him doing it, he was putting about five to five to seven hundred dollars on the budget every when I, month. When I start, like yeah. when it picked up, once it picks up, like so I said, about, oh. about, about so a what year. are you making now? So uh, on on a, on a on a good month, um, I mean it varies. I don't push as hard as I once did because this was sustaining us through COVID. But uh, five to the most I've made in a month is seven thousand dollars. Flipping Jordans, folks. That's, Come on, a, that's, a, that's over $80,000 a year for those of you that need a calculator. Uh, that's unbelievable money. So uh, here's why we brought Sam in.
I wanted this audience to see and hear the story. Here's what it started out with. Something that he was interested in. He's a creative guy, but he wasn't designing or doing this. He just simply going, I like shoes. I like the kicks. I think there's margin here. And he began to do it on a disciplined level after he figured out, I'm not going to strike gold. He stayed with it. Mm -hmm. He's now built a reputation and a clientele. Yeah. And he's figured out the fine print on how to do it right. We could go into deep detail of how you find the shoes, where you find the shoes, okay. which one. So here's what I want you to hear. The takeaway from Sam Warshaw is if you want to have a side hustle that you're willing to stick with and be disciplined, pick something that you really enjoy. Mm -hmm. You'll stick with it through the ups and the downs. Did yep. you say that's true? Mm -hmm. 100%. There you, it is. you stay excited about it. It's Eighty thousand plus dollars flipping Jordans. Woo! Don't tell me you, yeah, you the can American do anything dream out here. is not oh, no. alive and well. <laughs> My goodness, that's not a side hustle. That's a dream job for some of you. I love it. Don't move. We'll be right back. This is the Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show, where we talk about your life, specifically your money, your work, and your relationships. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, Jade Warshaw. We're here for you this hour, 888 825 -5225. Jade, we hear this, I feel like, every month when we uh, get together in our production meetings. We have new people joining us at enormous rates mm -hmm. and high numbers. YouTube and podcast numbers are going bananas. And and welcome to all of you who are new. You stumbled upon a video or you got a podcast recommendation and you're here. And you're going to hear things like baby steps and then the the individual <laughs> baby steps. And you're going to hear things intense. like gazelle intensity and rice and beans and beans and rice. You're going, are these people nuts? Well, that's still up for debate. But <laughs> if you're new to the show, we want to get you caught up on the money conversation that we're having, where you fit in these seven baby steps that we teach that will get you to true financial peace and freedom. And so we have a site, uh, RamseySolutions.com. That's our main website, uh, RamseySolutions.com. And you'll see a get started button there. And just click on that. And just in a couple of minutes, we'll get you caught up and, and you'll see where you are on the journey so that you can join in, in the conversation and uh, always know that we would love to take your call. We're here to coach you, to encourage you, 888 825 -5225. Hannah is up next in Dayton, Ohio. Hannah, how can we help? Hi, I just have a question um, about regarding if my husband and I should keep our rental property. We lived in it for three years and... Um, it's a duplex, and now we bought our own home. So we're just trying to see if we should sell it or keep it. So the duplex, do you have a mortgage on it? We do. How much is it? Um, a one, um, one hundred twenty-four thousand. One twenty-four k is what you owe on it. Uh, what's it worth? Do you know what the units would sell for? Um, we could probably get about two hundred k out of it. Okay. Um, and your current, you said you've got a second home. You're, you're, you've already bought another house or you're thinking about buying another house? No, we already bought another home. Oh, okay. Um, and you've rented out both sides of the duplex at this point? Um, we're not quite finished with closing yet on the other home, so we are still living in the duplex for right now until it closes. Okay. And what's the mortgage on the new house? Um, it will be um, three twenty seven. Wow. And how much cash flow are you getting from the duplex? Or um do you hope about, to get from uh, it? So we have another renter lined up um, when we close. Um, so she'll start in August, and we'll get twenty two hundred a month. Hmm. Um. You know, if it were me in your situ situation, I probably would have sold the duplex and taken that money and rolled it into the brand new house just so that you can go in with a massive down payment. I mean, you'd pay it off super fast because you wouldn't have any other payments. What's your income? Be, um, uh, not including the duplex rental. 
Yeah. Um, one thirty. Yeah. I mean, if you're asking, do I think you should sell the duplex? I'd probably get rid of it so that I could be debt free with my home even sooner. Do you have any other debt? No, just, just the mortgages. Yeah. You know, for me, I am, every decision that I make is one, one that's going to get me closer to financial peace. And for me, I'd probably get rid of this duplex. It's cash. I mean, the cash flow is nice if you can maintain that, but would I rather have $2,200 a month or would I rather have a paid for home that's worth $400,000? And I would rather have the paid for home that's worth $400,000. Then I can sell, save up. I can buy more real estate down the line in cash. Yeah, that's what I've been thinking, but everyone has been telling us we need to keep it. We need to keep it. And we could have it paid off. And because all they're years. seeing is monthly income. All they're seeing yeah. is you're making $2,200. They're not seeing the debt and they're not weighing that into their calculation, the risk of that. Because all it takes, think about it, all it takes is something to go wrong with a renter, a renter not mm -hmm. paying, somebody moving out, somebody to, you know, breaking their lease. There's so many things. Then you've got the repairs to think of. Now you've got two properties that you're maintaining, both carry debt. And it's going to be so hard to cash flow all of that, not resort to HELOCs, not resort to credit cards. But when the property is paid for, you don't have that desperation where it's like, I've got to get a renter in here. Right. I've got to get yeah, this fixed. So yeah, that's what my husband and I have been like thinking. I'm like, cause we have our car in case like a car fund in case uh, one of our cars goes kaput. But uh -huh. like, we may not, you know, if something happens to rental, then that our car fund's gone and then we would have to resort to loans in that way. And see, you understand it. Like, so yeah, Hannah, we, Hannah, you and your husband are on the same page that you should sell a duplex. I know. Everyone's that's telling what, us not to. Who's everyone? Let me talk to him. <laughs> yeah. well, here's the... our, our realtor says we won't, I don't want to sell your rental property because you can get a new realtor, get a new realtor. Listen, yeah. and you can, all, the, you can, there's always properties to buy. All right. There's always going to, if you guys decide you want to get into this later on, it's going to be there and tell your realtor that look, well, there'll be other houses to sell and buy. You'll be all right. Right. I know. I know. It just sounds like a hassle. Like we are 25 and 26 and we want to travel and. Yes. Girl. Okay. What's the duplex worth? If you um, sold it we today, could get it, we could probably get it easily for 200. That's what our realtor okay, said. Okay. And what do you owe on it again? 124. So we could profit about 50 to 60. That's how much would you love to get an infusion of 50 to $60,000 okay. at this point in your life? Oh Hannah? my gosh, it would be amazing. Okay, Hannah, that listen. Would, that's your answer. So, Hannah, listen, 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 listen. It's you and your husband's life. It's your budget. It's your dreams. It's not, no one else gets a vote. So stop worrying about what everybody else says and what they're going to think. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I'm not getting on you here. I'm trying to set you free to do what you two believe you should do because you know it's right. And Jade and I are agreeing that you guys are right. It's the right decision financially and it's the right decision for you two emotionally and where you are at. Stop worrying what other people are going mm -hmm. to say, your friends and family and your realtor when you decide to do what you want to do. It doesn't matter what they think. And oh, by the way, once you tell them what you guys are going to do, then they'll just shake their head, roll their eyes, make whatever snide comment or right. not say anything at all. And then they'll move on to their life and they don't care what you are doing. So you should stop caring about what they think. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. The news cycle on that is going to last 10 seconds and then everybody's going to go back to what they were doing before. They're going to go, what? Hannah and them sold their duplex? So true. <laughs> and then they're going to go eat a chicken sandwich for dinner. That's right. Just like that. Tell your realtor that he or she has 24 hours to get a sign in the front yard of the duplex or you're going to get a realtor who will sell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's right there, Ken. Who wants the commission on Who's this? Who's working for who? <laughs> I know, right? Uh, have we forgot roles here? Hannah, Hannah, you've got good instincts. You and your husband have good instincts. Do what you know to do. Pocket that fifty k. Hey, if you don't have any other debt in the world, you can roll it into this house. You're gonna be debt free before you know it. Call us back. Matter of fact, come down here and see us in the lobby when you pay that house off. It's just reframing. Yes. Actually, they didn't need reframing. She and her husband are on board. It's yeah. just the power of peers. Peer pressure. I think this is so important to talk about. Mm -hmm. People that we we really like and love, those would be your friends 
family. Yep. And then you got people that you respect, like a realtor who's been good to you. Mm-hmm. And they're a pro. And they're the pro. Yeah, they're and the so professional. They're like, they can yeah. sway us. It's funny. I mean, I think that when it comes to all of this stuff, can money, managing your money, getting out of debt, how you're managing your money, the best freedom that you can have is when you stop caring what people think. When it's just like, hey, my neighbor can go fly a kite. If he thinks that I should be renovating my house, he can go fly a kite. I don't have the cash to do that right now. You know, the guy at work, he's been asking me, are yeah, you still driving that jalopy, right? He can go yeah. kick rocks, right? You know what I'm saying? You got to stop caring what these people think. Yeah. And uh, that's when you hit that tree, that true freedom. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's just reframing to say that, wait a second, what we've done with this duplex is really, really smart. We mm-hmm. sold it. And we're taking that cash and putting it down on our house, our okay. first home, Yeah. which now we don't have a nuisance if we want to travel. We don't have to worry right. about some renter calling me up going, uh, the faucet is stuck. Right. That's yeah. not even a phrase, by the way. I don't think faucets get stuck. But, you, you but get they're my tied point. down when they have you that, that property. They, yeah. They're they not going to go travel around the world for months on oh, end with Hannah, a duplex. Hannah, Hannah, do what you and your hubs want to do. You guys are right. So fun. All right, Jade. Good hour. Thanks, as always, my friend, for being on the show with me. She's so good. And uh, thanks to James and the entire crew for keeping us on the air. America, this is your show. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Ken. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studio, this is the Ramsey Show, where we help you win in your life, specifically your money, your work, and your relationships. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by Jade Warshaw this hour. The phone number for you to jump in is 888-825-5225, 888 5225 We'll start it off this hour in Champaign, Illinois. Faith is there. Faith, how can we help? Hi, so um, I have a question. So I'm 18 years old, and I just graduated high school. I was valedictorian. Oh, way to go. Wait a second, Faith. Don't just skip by that. I know, right? We'll slow clap for Faith, the valedictorian, ladies and gentlemen. Very nice. Congratulations. (laughs) Thank you. So my parents, I've known you guys for 10 years. My parents have blessed me and teach me everything about Dave Ramsey. And so I'm not touching that at all. I'm not even getting close to it. I know the whole situation. So I dedicated myself to getting scholarships, and I got plenty enough to get a full ride. Wow! So I don't have to. I don't have to worry about college. And so um, you're like a unicorn. Now, yeah, really. <laughs> so um, now I'm working just because you know I love working. I enjoy it, and I'm trying to make as much money as I can to have a good future. Mm-hmm. And so I was wondering, what do I do? Should I start investing or what should I start doing? I have a thousand savings savings and almost a thousand in um, my checking account. And then I have extra money on the side, Mm -hmm. like some other stuff. But I was wondering, you know, what you guys' recommendation for me? Because I'm technically baby step three. But yeah, I was just curious on what I should do. Well, first oh. off, you're a freaking rock star, girl. You're killing it. I mean, valedictorian. She's working. Got scholarships. Got an emergency I mean, fund. Emergency fund. Got a little more cash. We don't mm-hmm. know how much cash she's got stashed okay. in the backyard. I mean, my I want to meet. I want to meet your parents. Number one, because they did yeah. some things right. You know, what I'm saying they raised you right. Well, very, very yeah. good. Um, very, very good. Mm-hmm. Um, how much are you making? Uh, right now working so i'm a waitress so mm-hmm. it's not guaranteed but i make about um 60 to 100 a night depends like tonight i'm gonna work and i'll probably make almost 100 and then Very whatever good. i get per hour i get 725 per hour so okay. Very bucks, cool. probably a night for just that but yeah so about 100 i'll probably make tonight and then 
Yeah, I mean, you could definitely on, so. start looking into investing. Mm-hmm. I think that that would be great. Um, in your case, probably just like a Roth IRA because you need you need earned income to put mm-hmm. into that. Um, but uh, yeah, I I totally would start. I mean, you're baby step wise, and even you know we've got a set of baby steps that we have for young folks basically that they follow and you followed all of that, you know, having $500 saved and, you know, paying for college uh, debt free, paying cash for a car, you've done all of that. Um, And so, yeah, you are at the point that you could start, you know, as long as you've got that earned income, you could start investing. And if I were you, I'd probably go ahead and start because look, at 18 years old, the amount can, we've got to talk about this Mm -hmm. at 18 years old, Mm -hmm. That compound interest oh, is going to be kicking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We've mm-hmm. got, and you know, so many people, I, I just have to talk faith. So many people, they don't get to start until later in life. And I'm not mad at them. They're not doomed in any way. They're still going to be all right. But mm-hmm. you starting at age 18 is amazing because what you're going to be able to accomplish, um, most people are not even going to ever be able to catch up to what you're going to be able to accomplish because of the time that that interest is going to continue to compound. You're going to be... I mean, how much do you think you could put away? I mean, would you be able to max out, you know, 6,500 in a year? Um, yeah, because last year I had about 10,000 and mm-hmm. then I hope my parents or something. So I gave them some money because we were looking to pay for our cars because we, we flip cars. My parents do that. And we also have a business. So I help them with that. Uh, we have a photo booth business, so I know I love the entrepreneurship and building I got, I businesses. Have, I have I some questions about that, <laughs> but I won't I won't belabor it. Well, I, so you giving your parents the money, was that a car well, for you? Um, yes. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So it was just help paying for a car because when I was 16, you got to get one. And so okay. now we're selling it and I'm going to buy because they kind of help me pay for it. Like I paid half, they paid half. Okay. So okay. you're not, you're not, it, you're not it, giving them it. money for their side business. No, 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 no. Oh, got okay. it, got it. Okay. All right. Our red flags no. went up for a second. We we're going to go ahead and pull those back no. down. Okay. So, um, yeah. Well, so what I try to do is when they have their business, that's me. Like, I don't want any money from them because that's, right. they feed me, they house me. That's mm-hmm. me helping them. So, so what this is going to um, so look yeah. like is you... I would bring my parents in on this because it's just a great thing. I would check out one of our smart investor pros and I would sit mm-hmm. with one of these ladies or, or gentlemen, and they're going to have the heart of the teacher. They're going to answer your questions. They're going to let you know what your limits are, what you need to make, what you can contribute. And they're going to help you. They're going to help suggest ideas of how to invest this money. Of course, um, with Ramsey Solutions, we suggest four different types of funds, and they're going to go through all of that growth, growth and in income, mm-hmm. aggressive growth, international, and they're going to help you say this is where we, this is what we think, but they're not going to force you to do it. They're just going to walk you through that. And of course, at the end of the day, you don't invest in anything that you don't understand, yep. and you can take your time. Yep. And you've got your parents there, and this is just, I think this is a really cool opportunity for you to learn. It's a really good opportunity for you to just mm-hmm. start exercising that muscle of investing. And again, Smart Vester Pros, come on, Ken, I can't talk about that enough. These folks know what they're talking about. They really do. They're vetted. They yep. follow Ramsey yep. principles. And, you and know. a great experience for you, Faith, to sit with them and let them teach you to where you understand it, get your mom and dad's input. But yeah, you could put as much as 500 bucks a month in uh, at the rate you're working. You're such a rock star. You got some money saved as well. So you can max out that 6,500, I think, pretty easily. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's wise. If you were my kid and you were in that situation, I would absolutely say do it. Mm -hmm. Really proud of you. You are an overachiever. My goodness. I'm just thinking back to when I was Faith's Faith's age and I feel like a loser. I mean, I, I've got oh, some. Definitely, me too. I, you know what I mean? I'm like, man, I thought I had it together. Like, oh man, no, I was like, dude, where's my car? I was not <laughs> on it. <laughs> dude, where's my car? Oh my gosh! All right, not so let's it. talk about. So here's a young person mm-hmm. who has has figured it out. I think she said she'd been listening to the program for ten years. Yeah, and good on mom and dad, and she's figured it out. She's busted it. You were talking about on paper, she is set up beautifully valedictorian, full ride, all of these things. But these young people are still getting uh, an enormous amount of bad information, dubious advice from Instagram, TikTok, commercials as to what they should be doing early on with their finances. And Mm -hmm. and you can get in a trap at 18 with just credit cards or 
feeling like, oh, it makes sense to take out student loans. And all of a sudden, before you even understand what you've done, Mm -hmm. you've built a financial trap. Yeah. I mean, I think their intent is right. I think that young people are seeing, okay, debt has affected my parents. I've seen the way debt can affect things. And I think that they want to get ahead. I think they're interested in building wealth, but they're looking to social media, TikTok, and sometimes they're getting the wrong information. It's a good intent, but a wrong strategy. So I'm glad that she's got connected with Ramsey. And we're going to teach you the best way, uh, the safest way, and the most strategic way to build wealth fast. That is a fact. Don't go anywhere. A few messages, and then Jade and I will be back here on The Ramsey Show. In Dubai. Hey guys, being free to make your own medical decisions is a big deal these days. Christian Healthcare Ministries gives members the freedom to choose the doctors and providers they want without the frustration of worrying about networks and with no waiting period to join. It's a membership-based nonprofit ministry where hundreds of thousands of Christians share funds to pay for and pray for each other's medical bills. For over 40 years, CHM has helped families living across all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Check out more today at chministries.org slash budget. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, Jade Warshaw. Excited to have you with us. The phone number to jump in is 888-825-5225. Time for our question of the day. Today's question of the day is brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services. Now that the weather is warming up, it's time to enjoy your outdoor space. Neighborly's Mosquito Joe service can help make your outdoor area pest-free. I got to call them today. Okay. I saw a mosquito last night on my patio that was big enough to carry a toddler away. Mm. So I, I need to get this service. <laughs> uh, we live in the southeast here where, like, they look like birds. Oh, yeah. They eat sub sandwiches. Yeah, yeah it's not fun. Uh, so if you want to be outside and enjoy uh, your outdoor experience without getting bit by a mosquito, Mosquito Joe services for you. This is just one of the services at Neighborly.com where you can reach your local Mosquito Joe today. All right. Today's question comes from Brandon in New Mexico. He says, I work at a job that provides well for my family, but I'm not passionate about it and I feel exhausted. How do I balance pursuing what I'm passionate about with the responsibility of providing for my family? I feel that if I leave my current job, other people will see it as irresponsible and they wouldn't understand understand why I'm willing to take a pay cut for a little while just to get closer to the career I love. And that lines up with what I want for my future and my family. Wow. Interesting. Love this question, Brandon. And you've got a false choice. And this happens a lot. The choice that's lined up in this question is, do I pursue what I'm passionate about, which might take a short-term pay cut? Uh, as as a reality of a step to move forward towards the life that I want, that includes what's good for my family, work that I really find meaning in, or do I stay in a job that pays really well? And this is a false choice. Mm. And the reason it's a false choice in the way he's worded this way, and Brandon, why you're positioning this way, is because you are more worried about what other people will say than what you believe. In other words, you believe it's right to take this other job. You've already got it in mind. It's as clear as it can be to me, or it's another direction that's been very, that's been made clear to you. And so it's a false choice because you are worried about what friends and family will say, because you're walking away from something that's prestigious. And what looks like a step backwards to them is a step forwards for you. And it's not their job to understand it. It's not your job to make them understand it. You can certainly explain it, but it's your life. It's your future, your family's future. So uh, in this situation, I'm I'm okay as long as we can budget for it yeah. and we can plan for it. We don't want to make this move and put ourselves in bad financial straits. There you go. But if we can sacrifice, plan, mm-hmm. uh, make some life changes to absorb what would be 
a small pay cut or a significant pay cut I'm okay with if we can absorb it mm-hmm. and we're not miserable and resenting the decision Facts. six weeks in. <laughs> so this is the idea here. Um, we got We can't just do the heart. The heart tells us, and now the brain helps us figure out the plan. That's so good. And let's do some common sense with this, but I'm okay with this. And I think, again, it's a false choice. You must choose to, to take the path that is purposeful. And it, it purpose isn't just... I was created to do this kind of work. It's yeah. this is the lifestyle that I believe I'm supposed to live for my family. We are not just occupational That's people. Right. We are relational people. And we spend, I mean, we spend so much time working oh. and at our jobs. If yeah. you're not doing something that gives you energy, that That's you right. enjoy doing, that feels purposeful, man, that's just that's no way to live. It's like and in your family union. Your family unit, like if mama and papa ain't happy, no ain't happy. nobody happy, Isn't that right? The truth. Oh, that should be a bumper sticker. That's good. That Let's is. go to Dustin in Orlando, Florida. Dustin, how can we help? Hey, what's up, Ken? How you doing, guys? We're having a blast. What's going on with you? How can we help? Yeah, so my uh, major question is, is it immoral or uh, slightly wrong uh, to go back to school um, using my GI Bill? Um, and then throw the money that I get for my housing allowance for that uh, to throw that at my baby step two. Is it unethical? What do you think? Well, well, I don't, I don't know. Is um, it the GI kinda, bill or the housing allowance part? It's the housing. Uh, allowance. It's, it's the housing allowance uh, from the GI bill. Um, so a little bit of back info. Um, make around. Uh, Seventy to eighty thousand um, a year. Um, give or take how you look at it. I make uh, I'm a ninety percent disabled, um, so I get um, my money from my VA disability, um, which covers my mortgage and my um, everything, housing allowances and stuff uh, currently. But um, I'm looking at going back to school, uh, looking at getting um, a biz- uh, business management degree. Um, because I do, I do love the job I'm currently in. Um, after uh, getting out of the military, I was reading your book, um, and it's like really, you know, gave me like, okay, like yes, this is going into this job field that I'm currently in. Um, what I really wanted to do. Okay, um, uh, Dustin, let me I jump love- in. Let me jump in really quick because yeah. I want to make sure I'm understanding this right. I got a little confused. So yeah. you're in a current job right now, correct? Yes. What are you doing and what are you making? Um, I am actually a roller coaster mechanic. Okay. Um, um, make about uh, seventy five thousand okay. a year. All right, so seventy five thousand is a roller coaster mechanic, and then what is your disability payments that you got for your service in the military? So my disability payment is um, right around uh, twenty one uh, two thousand six hundred and sixty six a month. That's part of that. I counted that into that. Uh, oh, it's a part 75. of the seventy five. Yeah, so I kind of counted that as. Oh, okay. So why wouldn't you use why wouldn't you use your disability income to pay off your debt and use the housing allowance for your house? I mean, yeah, it's just kind of like moving the funds from one. one Yeah, and I'm questioning why are we going back to school? Do you want? Because you just told me that my book helped you pick out this mechanic job. Do you really want to go into business? Well, um, just like with, um, it would still be. I'm basically just to move up and to progress in the company, um, going from being the you know the low level mechanic, um, moving up into you know supervisor. Um, okay, here two things. Number one, you don't need a uh, what was the degree you were looking at? Uh, business management. You don't need a business management degree to move up in management. If you're moving, right. if you're in mechanics, that's number one. Now, I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm trying to figure out the math on this deal. So if you go get this business management degree, are you doing it part-time? Uh, yes, I would be um, trying to pull as much time as I could. Um, with working, I work nights, uh, 40 hours a week, um, so, but I work four tens, so I'm off three days a week. Okay, that, so now we're starting those three days. Okay, so you could pull this off without being fried, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because uh, I heard disability. I'm just trying to make sure all this is feasible here because this is all about, hey, should I go to school so that when I go in back into school, you're going to get a housing allowance from, from, from the government, correct? Correct. And what's that additional housing allowance going to be? Uh, rounding up, um, 
two thousand a month. And it, it, okay. go ahead. No, no, that's right. I was so. gonna say. So my screen says, "Is it unethical to use my GI Bill to go to school?" I want you to explain to me why that's why you feel that's unethical. I'll be honest; it's not my forte of study, but why do you feel like it might be unethical? What's the part that's hanging you up? And I can we'll tr- try to help you with that part. Um, I guess guess for me, it's partially like. Um, Is it because you can I, pay? Uh, well, I mean, pay, I mean uh, so I mean, my my work um, also does a tuition assistance um, program, but knowing that I could take this GI bill and essentially get this degree for free and mm-hmm. also it would it would help me um essentially by the end of the having the degree would get me out of baby step two and baby, baby but, step yeah, three it's not unethical it's for not you unethical. to use the housing allowance to then pay what he's saying is i'm getting housing allowance which i don't need can i use it to pay off debt and i think the answer is yes yeah i would say use the use the housing allowance to pay for your housing and then that frees up money in your budget if that makes you feel better to do it that way do it that way yeah i mean you don't need the degree but if you want the degree you're getting it free thanks for thanks yeah. for your service you've earned it you've earned it uh, so there's nothing unethical about doing this at all Uh, I think that's his big hang up. Well, I don't need the housing allowance, but I get it anyway. But hey, uh, I put it towards paying off, you know, what he currently has. I would use it. It's an allowance. Whenever I got an allowance, I did whatever I wanted with it. That's the way I look at it. There's some wisdom. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey folks, you know that sinking feeling when you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer? You need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre-approval and a secured interest rate. Plus a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show, where we talk with you about your life, specifically your money, your work, and your relationships. All three of those areas are interconnected, and if you're not winning in one of them, it it tends to affect the others, and we want to help you. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by Jade Warshaw. The phone number for you to jump in on the conversation is toll-free, 888 Let's go to Lori, who joins us now in Sacramento, California. Lori, how can we help? Hi, thanks for taking my call. Um, I'm 61 years old thinking about uh, setting myself up for my retirement. And um, I have about $1,000 at the end of every month. And I'm wondering, am I better off putting it towards my mortgage or putting it into investment? Hmm. So you have, are you totally debt free? Totally debt free. Awesome. So, and are you currently investing 15%? Uh, No, right now I'm only investing the match at my 401k. Okay. So tip, following our steps, what I would tell you to do is invest up to 15% of your income. That's baby step four, right? Into your retirement. And then anything above and beyond that, we would put on the mortgage to pay off the mortgage. How much do you have left on your mortgage? About 230,000. Okay. Are you still working? Oh yeah. Okay. Perfect. Love. Yeah. How long do you plan on working? Until my mortgage is paid off. <laughs> okay. Nice. So what is 15% based on our baby steps? What's 15% of your take home? I take home, uh, I make about 100000 a year. Good. Okay. So what's your, let's see, what's that 50, 15% number of your take home roughly? Oh, that would probably be about $1,500 maybe. Yeah. I was thinking it was a little bit more than yeah. that 1000 at the end of the month. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, at this stage, Jade, are we putting all 1000 in there? I think we are. Yeah. You want to get to the fifteen percent? I mean, and if and if I'm if I'm putting rather than putting the the extra into my 
401k, Mm -hmm. that's kind of what I was thinking. Should I put it into a Roth instead after tax and, and, uh, or does that matter at my age? So, yeah, the way we do, the way we teach it is, um, match beats Roth beats traditional. So if you have a match on a traditional 401k, you could invest up to the match and then you could move over and invest in a Roth IRA and max that out. And if you still had money to go, you could come back to your 401k and continue to do that as, as far as you could make it until the match or until the, okay. till the limit, I should say. Does that make right, sense? Right, right, right. Yeah, that does. I, I did want to question. I did want to ask a question though, because we do find this sometimes. Um, are you finding it difficult to have fifteen percent left over to invest? No. Okay. I just <laughs> wanted to check. I've, no, for a really long time, I've been living uh, beneath my means, and I've Good. always saved at least ten percent mm-hmm. uh, off the top. And then right now, I'm putting twenty five percent away in, but it's my ish account, so. I What's only that? have like twelve thousand. That's that's my my fake emergency fund. So, okay, but did you call it an ish? She called it an ish account, which I love. I'm going to put my, that in my pocket for later. It, it is my ish account. So you know, I sh- give putting twenty five percent away for the last you know five or ten years. But why? So, I'm so how much is why, in the ish why? account? Only about twelve thousand right now. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Okay, I, I'm going to dig deeper. So you've been putting away 25% of your income for, for that long, and you've only got 12500 That's not yeah. that's not an that's emergency dumb. fund. That really is an ish account. No, it really is an ish account. So it that's really you, that's just your slush fund. Like, whenever yeah, I feel like doing something, I go, I go to that account. Right, right. Hmm, I don't know. I think, okay, yeah, I that's cost you a lot of money. <laughs> It, it, well, I mean, I didn't do too stupid of stuff with it. I didn't like buy a car or I, I, sure. I did a, a house remodel. Okay. Out of that account. Okay. And so well, this is that, easy. Though. That shoot up a huge. So yeah. this is easy. You're going to be able to put the full fifteen yeah. percent in because you're just putting oh. less money into ish. Okay. Yeah. You know, I well, love you know, that. I'm not mad way. at her for paying cash for. Well, no. You know, that's what you do. You pay cash for renovations. She's been disciplined. Uh huh. Although I just, yeah. I want to make sure it's. I feel like it's been a, a little too much because she could have been investing that money. Yes, yes. But in the grand right. scheme of things, there's a, there's yeah. enough discipline for you to now fully fund Baby Step yes. 4 and never stop. What do you have in investing? What do you have in retirement so far? About uh, 325000 Okay. Oh, right. Yeah, let's let's keep rolling with it. What's the house worth? The house is worth about uh, maybe five fifty. There we go. Okay. Yeah. There you, we go. When we when we get to the end of this, you're gonna have a million dollars. That's exciting. But yeah, let's let's swap it instead of doing ten percent into <laughs> retirement and twenty five percent into ish. Let's mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> let's get those balances right. And like Ken said, you've got you've got good habits. It's just making sure they're like going down the right lane. Yeah. And so now we're focusing on investing and you've got three to six months of expenses saved for emergencies, correct? Correct. Okay. And then like, let's, you know, if you've got sinking funds or an ish fund for whatever you know of that's coming up, but here's the thing, if there's nothing coming up, that money that's sitting there in ish can be good, put to good use. Well, I, this is where I'm going to go. I, I, I'm sitting here listening to this, Lori, and um, it's not going to take much for you to put the full. So let's take fifteen hundred bucks. Okay, you've already got a thousand in surplus. We play around with those numbers you've been pouring into ish, and then deciding to take back out of ish, and we've easily got the fifteen hundred a month to get us to baby step four. Now we're rolling. Now here's the deal: you could juice that a little bit for a while. Right. And not put the money in the ish account. Right. You could do a little bit more, but you could pay off that house. I'd like to see the pay off the house because I'm asking you if you weren't if you weren't putting this money into the ish account and you were putting it on the house. How many years ballpark do you think it would take to pay off the 230 on your house? I think eight years. Woo. Love that. I mean, that's good. That's got you at uh, below the age of 70. And you are a millionaire. Plus, yeah. plus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And, and, and just anybody who's listening, if I wasn't so ish, I would have been done. That's <laughs> And that right there, that's the mic drop moment. That's what we needed to yeah. hear is, that's it. you know, you got to you, you, You're going to mess around and find out if you don't get on it and, and do these things, do the right thing with your money early yeah. on. Yeah. But the good thing is 
Sounds like she's avoided Lori, debt. You, the good news is, Lori, you've got this. You just got to decide what you want more. Mm-hmm. Now, I think this is a priority issue. And I think it's just you sitting down and going, where do I want to be 10 years from now? And what decisions allow me to get there quickly? Look, I'll take an ish account over debt any yeah, day. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I just love that that's what she called it. I that know, was I so love fantastic. It. Love that. I absolutely love that. All right, let's go to Hannah in Salt Lake City. Hannah, how can we help? Hi, I am curious on how to start a hard conversation with my parents about what to do with some money that they're going to come into. I kind of have an idea of what they want to do, and I just don't think it's the best thing for them. Mm. <laughs> um, so how, how do you have conversations with parents about about money girl look when you figure it out you come and let me know because (laughs) look it's hard it's hard and i don't know i'll be honest with you i don't know that it's always our place to do that and if if we do see you know what i'm saying like if we do see okay my parents are not making good decisions and you want to step in i I admire that and I applaud that, but they're grown folks and it's very, very hard Mm -hmm. for parents to take advice from kids. Dave calls it powdered, powdered butt syndrome. And it's, it's basically like they raised you and then you're coming in saying, Hey, I think you should be doing this with your money. Like, what are you worried about? It's true. The misbehaving? They, they're, well, they're 52 and they've been broke their entire life. This is the first time they're going to have any positive money yeah, yeah. and it's going to be roughly about four hundred thousand oh dollars so Look. hannah here's the deal jade is right we're running into a commercial here's the thing i think that you can be clear with them about the opportunities instead of tell them what not to do why don't you go and go hey i'm so excited about this windfall of money here's what you can do can i help can i coach can i hold you accountable suggestions not corrections clear and kind is the best shot you got this is the ramsey show Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined by my colleague, Jade Warshaw. We're here for you, America, 888 5225 So the job market and the economy are in a weird place right now. We hear all these different things. Jobs are being added, but unemployment spiked. Uh, interest rates still going to be jumping up a little bit, we're told. Mm-hmm. And yet, you know... Uh, Inflation is kind of dipping a little bit. So mm-hmm. you get all these mixed messages. It's a weird economy and, and it's uncertain. And so that uncertainty causes people to just freak out. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of people looking for jobs, opportunities in new cities or states, want to get that job maybe before uh, the economy goes into recession. All of these things, people are speculating. And that's going to involve thinking about moving and starting a new life in a new place, which can be exciting and intimidating. But you can take a lot of the uncertainty out of that part of the equation when you partner with a local expert in your new area, someone who'll show you the best neighborhood schools and places to eat. But seriously, you need someone who's invested in helping you start your new life on the right foot in a place you love and can afford. We're talking about a real estate agent, but not just any agent. An agent who'll do more than find you a home, but connect you Uh, to the right place for you, and that is a Ramsey Trusted Real Estate Agent. They're local experts who go above and beyond to serve you, and you can trust them to guide you. If you want to connect with Ramsey Trusted Agents all over the country who are ready to help you buy, sell, and hit the ground running in your new home, you can find them in your area by going to RamseySolutions.com slash local agents. That's RamseySolutions.com slash local agents. You want to know what I loved about my Ramsey I would like agent? to know. I I'm going to tell like you real know. quick. When we said this is the price point, that's what she showed us. Mm. She wasn't trying to get us uh-huh. t- 
That, I'm just, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. I like that. There was no angle. No It angle. was just serving. How is the new place? Loves it. Yeah. Love it. The Warshaws are settled. Love it. Yeah. And, and, and yes, we love it. We love our house. Our realtor, incredible. Yeah. I see her on my morning runs in the morning. Oh, that's nice. That's <laughs> yeah. nice. Really, that's really nice. great. There's some yes. extra accountability. You know, you don't want to sell somebody a bad house and see them jogging. Uh, well, it's not no. a good look. No, it was great. We got yeah. exactly right. She understood when we good. said, hey, we're doing this, this no credit, you know, we're doing it 25%. Of t-. Like she understood all mm-hmm. of the Ramsey language. Mm-hmm. That's what you need. All right. There you go, folks. Again, uh, if you're new to us, uh, these are men and women that we have vetted and we hold them to a high standard of service that Jade is talking about or else mm-hmm. they're out. So again, uh, those new to this, check them out. RamseySolutions.com slash local agents. All right. David is waiting for us in St. Louis, Missouri. David, how can we help? Hey, you guys. Thanks for taking my call today. You bet. Um, my wife and I should finish our fully funded emergency fund just at the beginning of this next month. And we've been saving that just in the traditional savings account with the quarter of a percent interest. Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of people use the, um, high yield savings accounts online with like Betterment and Marcus and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I just wondered if that's something we should consider because I'm not sure how I feel about having it with that extra degree of separation where there's not a bank I can lock it into. I actually, what you're seeing as a con, I see as a pro. Um, Obviously, you're getting a higher interest rate when you're going with some of these high yield um, savings accounts. I use Ally. Um, There's a lot out there. Marcus, there's Betterment, yes. Um, And I actually like the fact, and I actually suggest the fact that you make your savings account at a separate institution and that you make the three to six months money a little more difficult to get to. I mean, obviously you're not investing that money. You want it to be, you want to be able to get to it liquid, but with those accounts, yeah, it's like you have to transfer it over to your bank and that might take a day, which is not a bad thing because it gives you, it makes you think through, do I really need to pull this money out of my emergency fund? Mm -hmm. And I actually think that that is a great degree of protection, um, especially depending on your temperament. If you're the type of person who really struggles with keeping your money separate and not touching it, it's good. And for some folks, I'm like, hey, don't even get the debit card. Like some of those savings accounts, they're like, and we'll send you a debit card. I'm like, why do you need a debit card on your savings account? You need to just, when it's time, if it's time, transfer just what you need into your account and you're good to go. That's my, that's my take on it, Ken. Well, I agree with you. That's what Stacey and I have. So our emergency fund is in a high yield account that is, takes 24 hours. You can get it. And by the way, any emergency, it can wait 24 hours. You're not right. going to be up a creek without a paddle. Yeah, you'll so be fine. So you're fine. And uh, you're exactly right. And we do that because we just... And by the way, we try to cash flow small emergencies. Yes. I, let me tell you something. When you fully get into this plan mm-hmm. and you really embrace baby step three, you don't want to and touch you work that your money. butt off for that. When you have to dip into that, I get cranky. I had to get on myself recently because, uh, you know, I got teenagers and that means cars. Oh, and, you know, a couple thousand dollars. And I'm sitting there looking at and I was like, <sighs> I had to get on myself. You know why? As I was moping around the house, you're getting in a cranky yep. about pulling money out of my emergency fund. And I should have been like, thank you, Lord, for my emergency fund. But I was so cranky <laughs> about having to dip into it. They were like, Ken, you got money. You need to chill. I know. I was like, I like to leave it over there. <laughs> I like to look at it and go, oh, there it is. So, David, do you, you, know you see what, what we're saying? do you see what we're saying here, David? <laughs> I do. I do. Um, I kind of have a piggyback question off that real quick. Okay, we can do that. Yeah, we got a strong back. (laughs) (laughs) Now, uh, in our primary checking account, I usually like to keep $10,000 in there to always be able to start off the month with that. Am I doing overkill with that or should that just be with the emergency fund too? I mean, how much, what's your income? Um, well, this last year was 115, yes. but this next year it'll be a little less because my wife's finishing her graduate degree. Yes, it's I overkill. Mean, David, it's overkill. I, I applaud your discipline, but man, you're too scared. Yeah, you, you need to. <laughs> you don't need to start off with 10 grand every month. You get okay. Do you have any debt? Let's go back. No. Let's go. Okay, so there's no debt here. You need three to six months, 
And honestly, depending on your situation, and this is for anybody listening, we say all the time, three to six months of emergency. Well, Jade, Ken, how do I know if it's three months or six months? It's really dependent on a couple of uh criteria that you can look at. How stable is your income? If you're married, are both of you working? Do you have stable jobs? If so, three months is good. Do you have good health? Are you in and out of the hospital a lot? Maybe that's something you need six months because you're doing deductibles and things like that. If you're single and it's just one income, maybe you want six months because it only takes one thing to knock out your paycheck. These are the things that we're thinking of. So for you, figure out what's best three to six months and that's it. Put it in a high yield, Put it off to the side and then you're in baby step 3B if you're trying to buy a house. And after that, you're investing. Take that 10K. You better put that in an investment account and let it work for you instead of losing money sitting in a checking account due to inflation. <laughs> you're just losing money on that 10K. Yeah, does that make I sense like to you? That, it, it does. I just like having that accessible for just for our regular budgetary expenses. But well, what I it'll, know if, I was if you're not careful, what it'll cause there. you to do is not stick to the budget. Because you'll go, oh, we've yeah. got this 10K sitting here, so we don't really have... It's almost like, and I use this lightly, but it's almost like you could apply the credit card mentality because you've just got this net of money sitting there, just like a credit card would. You go, well, I don't really have to stick to my budget because there's just money sitting here. David, do you ever use it for that? In other words, um, how often really. do you find yourself dipping into that 10K cushion because your budget's off? Very rarely. Dude, you're I'm so tight you squeak. <laughs> yeah. You don't you don't even use it, man. And listen, I'm I'm not making fun of you. I'm like, dude, I had a feeling that you're he's right, so Ken. disciplined that he's never touched it. I can I just tell you something? I think it's a healthy dose of fear. And what I mean by healthy dose is you're responsible because of that fear. But to Jade's point, it's actually limiting you. And I think you need to let go, man. You got the white knuckles out. You need to let go, <laughs> man, and use that 10 grand better. You feel me? Now, I do love I a cushion. Do. I do love a cushion, but, but that's too much 10K. of a cushion. Yeah, that's too much. He Woo! needs to chop that down by 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 ninety yeah. <laughs> percent. Yeah. I think you need to take about sixty dollars of that and go get your mall massage. He's a loose Not up. in the mall, Ken. Come on, those guys do a great job. They really do. Don't so look you're down the at you're it. the Don't one who I pass by in the mall getting I a massage. Got no shame. Face down, drooling on the floor. Mall massage. There you go. Fantastic. This is who he is, America. That's a fact, folks. You'll thank me for it later. <laughs> She's Jade Warshaw. I'm Kid Coleman. This is The Ramsey Show. <laughs> What's up, guys? It's Jade. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studio, this is the Ramsey Show, where we talk with you about your life, specifically your money, your work, and your relationships. I'm Ken Coleman. James Warshaw joins me this hour. The phone number is toll free for you to jump in, so that we can coach you and encourage you. Triple eight eight two five five two two five. That's triple eight eight two five five. Two two five. Let's go to Chase, who is joining us on the line in Austin, Texas. Chase, how can we help? Um, so my question was, I was in debt at one point, used the baby steps, um, got out, um, actually sold pretty much everything and uh, worked, did jobs where like you work and where you work, you live. So like resorts and stuff. So mm -hmm. you're pretty much able to stay in your entire paycheck. Mm -hmm. I was able to get out of all that consumer debt. Anyways, now I'm in school, um, and I'm fortunate enough I've been able to pay for the school. And I've chosen to take on additional student debt that I don't need at 0% interest, and I'm putting it into CDs. So I'm getting 4.5% on it, but it's liquidable. Um, and so I was just curious, is that a good idea, or is that – is it just debt always bad? I think it's a bad idea. Um, 
you've got debt now and you've got the risk associated with it. Why wouldn't you just take your own money and invest it in mutual funds and get a 10% rate of return and then not carry any debt associated with it? So, so I'm, I'm doing a little bit of that as well. Uh, not in mutual funds, but I'm putting money into a private equity um, debt fund. But it's it's liquidable as well, like a mutual fund. But the student loan, because it's in a CD, I mean, unless they're, they, they're not FDIC insured, I don't think they can collapse. So my question was, like, is that – it looks like I'm carrying oh, – hold, like hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Chase. I, I'm interrupting because Jade asked you a very good point blank question and he that didn't you answer it. didn't answer. You sounded like a guy running for Congress, so that was good. I'm very smooth how you redirected. But why answer her question? Because I think you called us and she answered your question with a question. And so her question is basically saying, Yeah, okay, you're getting four and a half percent. Woohoo! But you borrowed. To get that, why not do what she just said? If you're doing it a little bit over somewhere else, why wouldn't you do it across the board with this money? I know the answer. Well, I want him to answer. Oh, I, why I wouldn't put it in a mutual fund? No. Oh. My, my question is, here. Here's, I'll answer the question that I asked you for you. Oh. You want to get rich quick. That's why. You. Yeah. That's why you're borrowing money. That honestly is supposed to be used for education and you're putting it in CDs of all things, which if you were going to do it, I'd say at least go all out yeah. and, and invest in a better vehicle. But it's like betting on a snail. The point is you're trying to get rich quick and that's going to lead to folly because there's no such thing as get rich quick. It, it, it doesn't it doesn't work out. And if it does, honestly, you're just lucky. It's not because of common sense. It's not because of good sense. And we're seeing that more and more. We're seeing uh, YouTube and Instagram and TikTok crazes where it's like leverage. There is such thing as a good debt. And when you use it good, it's called leverage and da, 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 da. And those equations never equate for two really important things. A, they never equate for risk, Ken. They always assume that everything's going to go right. Everything's going to be perfect. Mm. And they never account for something that here at Ramsey Solutions we think is so important, and that's peace. Yeah. If I'm getting, if I'm gaining wealth, I want to have the peace that goes along with it. I saw a TikTok where the girl was like, "I've got six million in debt, but I've also got nine million in assets," and I was like, "How do you sleep at night? Like that just that doesn't hit right for me." And here's the thing: you can do what you want to do. You're grown. Um, and you, you can choose to listen to the advice on this show or you can go another route. We're not mad at you, but if you call into this show, we're always going to teach you, um, what we believe is the best, fastest, uh, path to wealth. And that is to pay off your consumer debt. It's to take your income, which is your biggest wealth building tool and to invest it into good mutual funds over time. And we've done here. The, here's the thing here in Ramsey solutions. We have done the biggest study of millionaires ever done. And in that study, we studied what do millionaires do? What is the practice? What have they done over the course of time that has allowed them to build this wealth? And you want to know what the answer never is. I took out student loans and invested, <laughs> and invested in them CD. in a CD at 4%. Yeah, yeah. That is never, ever, ever the answer not to mention i just don't think it's right would you love for the the student loan company to know or the government was it government or student or private loan well god please not private chase uh no no no, no. it was so i, I qualify based on my income yeah but who, so it's, who it's gave from, you it's, pri it's government subsidized i'm essentially using my income to put it into cd if you because it does go directly to the payment yeah, well, um, you're playing. You got savings. some. You are very talented at mental gymnastics. Yeah, and and this is just not a good idea. It's not a good investing strategy, and uh, it's not what it's intended for. So that's our answer. Again, you're going to do what you want to do on this, but you'd be much better off investing in much better vehicles with than your what own you're money. Doing. Yeah. So you still owe the money, pal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you, oh, yes, you gotta pay, you gotta pay it back, and that four and a half percent is not gonna make the payback that much more exciting either. Mm -hmm. I just don't think the math even works. So. 
Appreciate the call, but uh, I, I don't know why people get sucked into these ideas. I, I know, know why they get sucked in. Who told him about this? I'm sure he saw, or he might have just come up with it on his own and, you know, in his mom's yeah. basement. But wow. the idea, it, it, it always rolls back to the same thing is I'm young. I don't want to fall into the same trap. How can I skirt the process? How can I get rich quick? Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to be, and I hear this a lot. I don't want to wait till I'm 60 to be a millionaire. And in his case, he's a young guy. He, he's going to be, a, if he does it right, he'll be a millionaire far, far, far before 60 or 55 or even 50 if he plays his cards right. We have people stand on that debt-free stage every day, Ken, and they come in, they're 47 years old, they're debt-free, baby steps millionaires, 45 years old, 30 years old. We see it all the time. Look at George. Yeah. This cat, I don't know how old George is. He can't be a day over 33. Mm. George is going to look that way when he's 90. I mean, I'm just saying, maybe he's 30. Who knows? He, yeah. I don't know. George is a young guy. He's but young. He's I'm in just his saying, 30s. it's possible. Oh, of course. And it's completely boring. It's yeah. not this like sexy thing. Like he's like, oh, I'm taking this money and I'm moving it over here, getting 4%. Then I'm moving it. No, it's like just take your income and. Invest it in good mutual funds over time. Let the compound interest do its work. And it ain't nothing flashy to talk about. You look up and before you know it, you know what you have? Money. Peace. Monty. Yes. Like that. Peace. There it is. No debt. It's fun. Yeah, the four and a half percent is nothing to get excited about either. Bro, that's not even inflation. That's not even. You're not going to get rich on four and a half percent. 4.5. That's a terrible score in the Olympics. (laughs) It's a terrible, terrible grade (laughs) on a quiz. I mean, 4.5? Oh, yeah. Nobody gets excited about 4.5 in any area of life. And with debt. Come on. I don't know. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything, from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Go to Blinds.com now and save 40% off selected products. Visit Blinds.com today for more info. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined by the incomparable, the fabulous Jade Warshaw, ladies and gentlemen. 888-825-5225. 888-825-5225. I can record that after the show, and you could just make that a ringtone or something <laughs> or, or announcement when you walk into the house. You know? Yes, that's what I need. Here she is. Teach it to Sam and Hill. <laughs> That's the truth. Speak of, yes, uh, Sam Warshaw, her uh, husband is in the uh, the lobby. Uh, by the way, made a special guest appearance on the Ramsey Show a little earlier today, if you want to check that out. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk about romance scams. And I got to tell you, when I saw the show run down today, I thought maybe I maybe I had gotten a, a, a scam email. I'm like, What? And I looked at it, and this is what I saw. There's been some headlines in the news. Some of you have seen these headlines. Mm -hmm. Here's a few. In love with a scammer, local woman loses $500,000. Wow. Iowan says he was robbed of $232,000 in cryptocurrency romance scam. I got questions. 
That's like a lifetime movie. I don't know that you can say cryptocurrency and romance in the same sentence. <laughs> I got questions. Uh, and here's another headline. Match Group removes 44 spam accounts every minute. And then, this is crazy, I'd laugh if it wasn't so sad. In 2022, nearly 70,000 people reported a romance scam mm. and reported losses hit a staggering 1.3% billion dollars the median reported loss forty four hundred dollars and only 15 percent of scams are reported so we actually took a call on the ramsey show recently where a man called in whose wife was scammed in an online romance scam not with him oh man and she ended up taking out loans for forty thousand dollars so wow that's a wow. quick snapshot of something i had not heard of until early this morning romance scams and in today's world it's very easy to get scammed on a lot of things but now yeah. these thieves are preying on people's hearts jade Look, what is happening with the world you got to be careful out there we can't <laughs> we can't get desperate we can't get too thirsty because the, the next thing we know we're going to be scammed out of forty thousand oh, hundred thousand dollars i saw this one come through yesterday um it was part of a media thing and it said i'm a mom of three who lost my entire 401k oh, no. to a scammer I met on Tinder. Oh, boy. A Tinder swindler. Uh, oh, <laughs> That's what it that is. feels like a Netflix special. It is. It is. Oh, it is. So here's here's how it goes. Her name is Rebecca Holloway. She lost $100,000 to a cruel romance scam. Oh, and they call gosh. this, this is what they call it, pig butchering. Oh my God! That's the that's the. It's like gosh, the show just got R rated. What are man, we talking about? It's it's why just, is that the term? Now that part Do we know. I, James was trying. James was explaining it to me. It says she's the third victim to come forward in recent months about this cruel scam. It's known as pig butchering, uh -huh. whereby victims are effectively fattened up. Oh boy! Because here's the thing: these relationships online. This is not just like, not hey, real. I slid into your DMs oh, and boy. we've been talking for two weeks. Ugh. Give me a hundred thousand dollars. No, they go. They fatten you up with a lot of flattery. Six months. They're in this for the long haul to make sure you believe it. I got a new term. Flattery fattery. Flattery fattery. That's, that's what's it. happening. I don't know if you can even say that. I just made it up. That's right. They get they fatten these women up. Oh, and boy. Careful. A lot of time. I'm saying with Ooh. like flattery and like. I'm glad you're reporting on this story. Look, I can say it because I get it. <laughs> now, here's <laughs> here's the thing. Over time, and, and a lot of times they call they refer to these guys as Fred's. Oh. It's like Fred from France. That's creepy. He comes in with his, hey, big spender, and the, he's got his money, and he's... That's your French accent. I like that. That's my... I don't know what that was, but... Freaky Fred is who that was. He... <laughs> Fattening these ladies. He, they, this whole thing yes. is out of control. So what they do, they a lot of times they prey on, at least this, this article says, they're looking for, it's a lot of times women who are recently divorced, maybe they've come into some money, and um, it says, officials say that this is exploding across the U.S., even the Secret Service is involved, oh, and they're admitting that they're seeing like a ton of cases here. So... Here's what we really want to talk. So you get the idea. Mm -hmm. Basically, what's happening is these women, they're meeting guys online and the guy seems too good to be true. And they're so enamored by that, that they and uh, honestly, and I don't mean, you know, a lot of times I think these women are just so like, oh, wow, he's interested in me. Like, this is great. Like, he's got money. I've got money. Yeah. And I think that they're preying on that mindset. 100%. And over time, once trust is built. It's, hey, you should be doing what I'm doing. I've got this cryptocurrency and they will send a link and it looks like a real account. It looks like a real cryptocurrency. It looks like a real investment account. And these women are transferring the money in. And here's the, here's the part that I want you to hear. Sight unseen. These are men that you've not ever seen or been able to reach out and touch yeah. in real life. Oh, I They're know. just... Uh, Virtual you don't, you men. Don't even know if, you don't even know if it's a dude. <laughs> Look, okay, and what do we call? What is that? I mean, catfishing. Catfishing. I learned that a couple years ago. Yeah, we don't know who's behind the screen, um, but the the fact is, these women are giving money. So let's can talk about just what I'm gonna call. You know. Well, there's two things. All right. First of all, we'll teach you some investing here in a second. All right. But let's just not get into online relationships. Well, okay? no, well, Ken, Ken, let's stop there. But wait, Ken, because some folks, that's where people meet sometimes. I like, know. Okay, let me clarify. Thank you for clarifying. I mean, 
your entire relationship isn't online. Yeah, you got to meet the dude. Needs some skin in the game before he's asking for some dough. Yeah, can we All meet right? at Five Guys? Can How about we meet some at some flowers? Yeah, and a burger at least. Yeah, that's what I mean. Well, when the, the it's girl, not real. It's got to be real. So stop this nonsense. The girl in the video in the article, she says we Facetimed. But he kept finding way. It was hard for me to get a picture of his face. He kept stepping away or being far yeah, from well, the there camera. You go. There's your sign. Here's my point. If he doesn't want to take you out on a date and spend his money on you, okay. then we're not continuing the conversation. I just had to get that out no, of my system. No, you're right, Ken. Stop you're right. it. You are not that lonely. You are not that desperate. I need to now, put, lay my eyes on your face right. in real life. Right. And then don't invest with anybody like that. You need a smart Vester Pro. Yeah. These are men and women that we trust. Uh, they have been in the business. They are winning in the business for people, and they have the heart of a teacher. We vet them because we say, look, if we're going to allow people to uh, come and, and, and know about you in your area and they meet with you, you've got to take good care of them. And if you look at the facts about real investing, all right, not scams online, get-rich-quick schemes, if you invest, uh, 100, invest $100 a month from 25 to 65 you're going to have around $1 million for retirement. That's not a scam. That's not too good to be true. That's based on the long-term average return of the S&P 500, folks. Real facts, real numbers. So a huge predictor, pred, uh, predictor of investing success is not the rate of return, but that you actually invest and you stay with it. This is not get rich quick. You mm. need a pro in your corner so that they can answer your questions to the point that you understand everything and you don't have them tell you what to do. Okay. You tell them what to do with your money because you now understand how it works. No shady FaceTimes, no yes. catfish strategies, real people, real strategies. We can connect you to a, far, uh, to a smart investor pro. <laughs> and they'll meet, maybe they'll meet with you face to face. <laughs> yeah, maybe. They eat, sleep, and breathe investments and they'll take time to work with you. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash SmartVestor. That's RamseySolutions.com slash SmartVestor. I got to tell you, it. I'm shocked at the numbers we just shared. But Ken. at the same time, when you don't know who you are, what you're about, what money strategies really work, mm -hmm. it's not just their hearts that are being scammed, their brains are being scammed. Well, that's what she says in here. It's she both. That's what she says in the article. She was like, I feel like my like psychologically I was scammed. There's no question. But if you don't understand money, yeah. someone can manipulate you that way. And that's what we're about here. We want you to understand how money works, how you can, can take control of your money, and how you can make it work for you. Yeah. It should never be complicated, and it should never just be, oh, do this one thing one time, and then boom, collect a big check. Yeah. Don't give anybody money on the internet. Period. Nowhere. Not on Instagram, Facebook, Tinder, TikTok. None of them. Don't give them money. Yeah. Not the romancer. Not the Nigerian prince. Nobody. Don't Tindler give anybody the money. All right. Tindler Swindler. <laughs> wow. This is scary stuff, folks. But we're here for you. Don't move. More of the show and your calls coming up. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. Jade Warshaw joins me in studio this hour. 888 5225 is the number. 888 5225 Let's go to Phoenix, Arizona, where Cam awaits. Cam, how can we help? Hey, so me and my wife are both 22. She just graduated. I have a year left. And we have no debt, a fully funded six-month emergency fund. And then we just have 15K just sitting in our bank, and we're wondering what route should we go with this money and what should we look to do with it? Ding, ding. That's exciting. So you guys yeah, are coming out of school, no debt. You've got the fully funded emergency fund. Um, what's, the, what's the marriage plan? Uh, we are married. You're not married? 
No, we are. Oh, you are married. married. Okay, I don't know why. Sorry, I missed that little point. So are you guys interested in home ownership? Yeah, that is one thing where we just don't know if that's good right now or what we should do in the next year or so with that money. I mean, it really, it's up to you guys sitting down and talking about what your goals are. You know, logically, when we think about money, typically you get married, paying off your debt, you're setting yourself up. And depending on what your lifestyle of choice is, a lot of folks do look into home ownership um, simply because they want a place to live and they want to build wealth. And they know that that is a key component over time of building wealth. So I do think that's something to import, important to consider on down the line. But if you guys are the type where you're like, hey, we want to backpack across Europe or we want to do all these other things. I mean, tell me a little bit about what you guys see for the future, even just the next five years. Yeah, I would say getting into home ownership is the biggest thing and trying to maybe get one, maybe a rental property or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just, so I've been, I was just curious with, so if we make about like 65K right now, and then if, when I graduate, it'll be a little bit over 100 together. Mm-hmm. You're saying just save and look into the housing market. Yeah, I like that. Now, if you're interested in real estate, like as rent, as, you know, landlords, I would suggest that you get into real estate first with a primary residence. So then you kind of understand, okay, this is what home ownership looks like. This is what repairs look like. This is what, you know, I can expect. And I feel like that's a great way to get your feet wet. And then over time, you know, you could pay up, you know, save up and pay cash for a rental after your primary residence is paid off. That's the way that we would suggest doing it. So, I mean, you're 22, the world is your oyster. You've got plenty of time. It sounds like right now you're just kind of in a dreaming stage. Like, what what could we do? You know, when I graduate, we could do this, we could do that. And I would say A1 is keep that 15K, keep it liquid. I would not invest it if you're interested at, you know, in purchasing a house in the next five years and just keep adding to it. Keep saving up and keep being intentional so that if the the time is right, you can pull the trigger yeah. and... Yeah. Yeah, there's an old phrase. I don't know if you're young, too young to remember this. My mom and dad used to say, don't let that money burn a hole in your pocket. They give you like 50 cents or <laughs> That's something. Right. And, the That's idea, right. and what that meant was, is, you know, don't be in a hurry to spend it. Mm-hmm. And I think in this case, the 15,000, I don't think you have to do much of anything with the 15. I would build it, mm-hmm. build, 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 walk through the baby steps. And I mean, again, the, the reason we have the baby steps is because that's where where you guys are headed and it's going to get you through the journey and so i would just stack cash i don't think enough young couples realize how valuable it is to stack cash don't mm-hmm. rush into home ownership that's right it, it, you just don't need to but stacking no. cash gives you options and i think jade you nailed that so that's really good advice cam thank you so much for the call and for listening watching the program michael's up in west palm beach florida i love me some west palm i'm gonna tell you that right now michael how can we help hey guys how's it going um my wife and i are actually recently married congratulations Um, <laughs> Thank you. We just hit the four month mark. Oh Ooh, my um, gosh! Come on, somebody. You're still in. You're still in La La Land, man. I mean, <laughs> you don't even know what it's like to be married yet. It's still early I, now. <laughs> I think that's probably true. I know it is. So what's so, going on? Together, uh, my wife and I have about four hundred thousand dollars in debt. Oh boy! And so that debt is a combination of a mortgage. Uh, Two auto loans, personal loans, uh, and credit cards. Can you break that down? How much is the mortgage? uh, 310. Okay, that makes me feel better. Yeah. Uh, Tell me. (laughs) It makes me feel better too. Go through Uh, the two cars. What's the two cars? So the two cars are about 45,000. Then we have about 30 in personal loans and about 20 in credit cards. Break the cars down more. Uh, What are they each loan and what are they worth? So uh, one's twenty thousand. One is uh, the other one's twenty five thousand. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the one that's twenty five thousand, we're probably in pretty good shape on it. Uh, the other one that's twenty, we're upside down by about six thousand. How much? So if you're in good shape on twenty five, what does that mean? Uh, I What's honestly think we could probably sell it and make about five thousand. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so. Now, Go ahead. We 
Our house, so part of what we're trying to figure out is if we should sell our house. Um, And the reason for that is I purchased the home in 2021. So I've actually lived in that home for the past two years as my primary resident. Okay. Um, And it's a multifamily home. So I've lived in the front unit and I rented a room out in it. And then the back unit ran as an Airbnb. Okay. And so the back unit produced around 30000 a year. Okay. Um, so what we could do and what we're contemplating doing is right now the value of the home is at about 500000 and that's based on comps in the area. Uh-huh. So if we were to sell, we would pay off all debt, um, literally all the debt that we have. We would rent... However, uh, renting is a little more expensive than what our mortgage would be. It is, yeah. Um, but that would. Do you want to get? A, you don't want to be a. You don't want to be a landlord or a B, Airbnb person anymore. You just want to live in a normal home with your with your girl. I, I yeah, I do want to. Uh, we do want to just have a house. Um, now we don't want to be an Airbnb necessarily, but a long term goal would be to have some rental properties. Right, but, but separate from one. where you live, like you don't want them in your house. <laughs> and I get Correct. that. Yeah, sell it. Yeah, I'm not mad at that. Sell it, clear your debt. Um, look, I'm with you. I don't want, you know, the Joneses living in my in my basement. I, I want a, a a house just just for myself with my husband, so yeah. I can understand that. Um, you'd be able to clear your debt. You'd rent for a while. You'd have a little bit of money um, left over mm-hmm. to start saving towards you know, a down payment on another house, but you could take your time. Nothing wrong with renting, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and rent till you can accomplish your goal. Sam and I rented for 10 years. Okay. And look at you now. Yeah. And look at us. Yeah. So I, I'm not you, mad at that. No, absolutely. Yeah, Listen, you, you got to sell the house. It. Sell the house. Go ahead. Sell the house. <laughs> All right. I'm it's, writing it down. <laughs> Listen, look, no, don't write it down. Do it. I mean, listen, brother, because Jade is right. You clear all this debt. You 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 take care of a bunch of mistakes that you guys have made. We're free of that, okay? And now she's right. You're gonna have leftover money that you can immediately put into your uh, 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 baby step three, mm-hmm. and then work on three B. Baby mm-hmm. step three is the three to six month emergency fund. So you get a head start on the emergency fund while you're renting. And then you're saving up for 3B, and you guys are going to be – you're going to be everyday millionaires if you just make this decision now, clear off the debt, and make a commitment to never do it again. And here's the fact. We don't usually say, sell your house and clear your debt. But in this case, it's like – Well, they don't want this long term. Well, it's a multifamily home. Yeah. It's really something that was supposed to be an income property. Yes, um, that's right. So in this case, it makes sense to do. But I don't want people listening going, that's right. the solution. Just right. sell my house and I don't have to go through this hard you know, pain and heartache. That's not what we're saying at all. This is a different type of situation. It is. It absolutely is. And I'm excited for you guys. Uh, four months into to marriage, and you guys can be debt-free pretty quick. That's an exciting future. <laughs> it's going to make learning how to be married a lot easier. Okay. I'll tell you that right now. Four months, they don't even have bad breath yet, okay? Isn't that the truth? Probably, <laughs> she probably still wears makeup to bed. Okay. I don't know. Do, they, do the kids do that? I don't know Your girl happening. ain't doing that. That's a fact. All right, folks, don't move. She's Jade Warshaw. I'm Ken Coleman. You're listening to The Ramsey Show. Welcome back, America. You are listening to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. Jade Warshaw is my colleague and co-host this hour. 888-825-5225 is the number to jump in. 888-825-5225. Our scripture of the day comes from James 1, 12. I'm going to tell you something. Anytime I read from James, I get a little, I sit upright because he brings it. James for breakfast. He brings it. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because... 
having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. And our quote from old Tom Morris, the grandfather of golf, Thomas Morris, his name, for true success, it matters what our goals are, and it matters how we go about attaining them. The means are as important as the ends. How we get there is as important as where we go. So there you go. Good stuff there. Uh, and Jade, you got uh, you got something you're pretty fired up about, pretty excited about. We you were know, just talking about during the break. I got to tell the people, when Sam and I were working to get out of debt, and some of you know, $460,000 of debt, there was one component that was like a silver bullet, if you will, Ken Coleman. And that is our budgeting mm. and our budget. And in the beginning, we started off with pen and paper. You know, you're on that yellow pad going. And then... Ramsey Solutions came out with something called Every Dollar. It was a digital budget, came out in like 2017, and it's still going, and it's better than ever. And I've got to tell people, this this is the missing component. This, the way Every Dollar is these days, guys, if you had it before and maybe you, you, know, you download the app and then you never use it, Go back into the app. I'm telling you, I'm looking directly at you. Go back into the app. There are so many features there that are so helpful. If you have irregular income, they've got the paycheck planning. If you are trying to look ahead and figure out how long is it going to take me to pay off this debt? How long is it going to save me to uh, take me to save for a house? They've got the fi- the financial road mapping plan. It will help you. It will change the game for you. And so, this is what I want to tell you about. I talked to the guys over there. They're like Jade. We're going to structure a deal for these folks. All Uh-oh, right. Oh, we got a deal. We got a deal. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm going into my set it and forget it mode right here. Okay. You can sign up today using the code um, that they will put on the screen. It's It's got my name. It's like a little promo code. Or you can find it in the show notes if you're listening on podcasts. And you're going to get a 14-day free trial. So you can test drive it, test it out, see how you like it. I can already tell you you're going to love it. And then... Because you signed up, you're going to get $15 off, which is a big deal because the thing, the whole thing only costs, what, 70, 80 bucks? 80 bucks. So you get $15 off. off. That's a big deal. Everydollar.com slash Jade. Now, that's an easy URL to remember. Okay. You wouldn't remember, Kent. That's right. But I promise you, everydollar.com slash Jade. Jade. And they got a photo of me. What am I looking at? It looks like I'm I'm looking at every dollar. You look, you, you know, you look, you look. You, it, it ain't you, bad. You're looking fabulous. I'm the color of money right there. You got the lime green <laughs> thing going on. It's fantastic. This go, guys. Everydollar.com slash Jade or use the promo code Jade in our store to get a digital or physical gift card. There it is. All right, guys. Every dollar, every dollar premium. That's what you need to do. You heard it here first. Thank you, Ken. Fantastic stuff. Steven is up now in San Antonio, Texas. Steven, how can we help? Hey, how's it going, guys? We're having a blast. What's going on with you? Uh, Nothing much. I just graduated. I'm 22 years old. I just graduated from college about Congratulations, young man. Nice job. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Uh, My degree is in finance, um, and I've been applying for jobs for like the last two months now, and... Yesterday, I completed my second interview out of three for a job position in Dallas. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm debt-free. I've never had any type of credit cards or anything like that, so I don't have uh, a credit score. So when it's time to start applying for apartments, how how do I qualify or how do I get an apartment without having any prior like um credit history or anything like that so when it comes to getting an apartment you don't need a credit score to get an apartment now there might be some apartments that are you know bozos and make you have a credit score and you'll just brush the dust off your feet and go to the next apartment right so there's plenty out there that will allow you to do that what i would suggest now is anytime you can uh, have any record of where you've lived and paid rent. So even if you're living with your parents, make sure that you're paying them something and that you can keep record that, hey, I've been able to pay rent. Obviously, uh, things like utilities, uh, anything that you're paying payments on, uh, cell phones, those sorts of things, save that and keep record of that because they basically want to know that you can pay. That's right. And here's the, you know, at the end of the day, sometimes when you use choose to use cash, there is a little bit of um, a premium that comes with that uh, for your freedom, which is sometimes they'll make you do first and last month's rent, or they might 
you know, have some extra, you know, double first and last month's rent because they want to make sure you have the money, even though your whole life is built on you having money. Um, So just be ready for those extra costs that they might ask you to do. Um, But at the end of the day, you are able to. Yeah, you can. And again, Jane's right. We have a system and that system has been gamed against us. And that's what the whole credit score is about. It's actually not a score of something you've done right. It's just a function of how much debt you've had Mm -hmm. and how much you've made your payments. And so, again, be okay to be courageous enough to push back and go, okay, listen, the reason I don't have is debt is I'm never going to have debt. And so I'm actually the kind of tenant you want to have because I'm not going to be over my skis Mm -hmm. uh, with with too much debt or any debt. And can I show you my payment history? I'm willing to put down two months deposit to, you know, you know, have a conversation because a lot of these, these, these apartment companies, their policy are set, are set by somebody way up the ladder. Okay. Yes. Right. And common sense wins the day sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and I'm glad Jay told you there will be some that'll look at you and go, I'm sorry. It's our policy. And then you have to go somewhere else. And yeah. so somewhere just, where they use their brains. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Basically. So do be prepared. It's not a it's not a guarantee. Uh, but also don't be afraid to to work it a little bit, because what do you have to lose? Nothing at all. Right. Yeah. Sam right. and I were able to get apartments several times over. And, you know, it's like Ken said, go somewhere where they're, you know, they're actually turning on their brain and using critical thinking. Yeah. And for us, a lot of times it was like, look. Here's our here's our payment history. Here's our bank stubs. Look, we've got money in the bank, like that sort of thing. So, thanks for the call, Stephen. Excited for you, my young friend. You're going to do great. Uh, let's get we get one more in here. Let's Tim from Saginaw, Michigan. Tim, Saginaw. how can we help? Hi, I have a auto loan that I've been uh, mandated to pay through a judgment of divorce, and it's at a fairly low rate. So I'm just asking, am I better off trying to pay it down quickly? Or uh, pay it you know, for the remainder of the time, uh, you know, and they try to save more in my 401k or, or what would you suggest? I always, always, always suggest paying off debt as quickly as possible. Okay. Always, um, especially for many reasons. In this case, I'm sure there's interest accumulating, which who wants to pay interest? I would rather gain compound interest later on down the road. Mm -hmm. So I want to free up as much of my income as quickly as possible so that later on, like what you were, what you mentioned, you can invest more and can do more of that. And, um, you know, what's the, how much do you owe on this car? It's 13, two and the interest rate is at 2.75. Yeah. Um, is it your only debt? Yes. Yeah. How quickly do you think you could knock that out? with your income? Um, I could probably do at least half the time because uh, I have to pay spousal support and that mm-hmm. type of thing. So, mm-hmm. um, but I could probably knock a couple years off of it. Oh I yeah. Think. Yeah. I'd say go gazelle intense, which around here, that just means going all out hard in the paint to get this yeah. thing knocked out. How old are you? I'm 58. Yeah. yeah. Get that thing knocked out, man. Tim, uh, Jay gave you great financial advice, but I'm going to give you, I think there's an emotional piece of this particular situation. She's right. She's going to be right every time on why why you should pay the debt off quicker and not just play out all the payments. But this is a divorce and you're 58 and I'd pay this off in the next year if I could because I want to remove you already got spousal payments I want to remove this debt financially but also emotionally and move past this my friend I'd, I'd take on a second job weekend work just to pay this stupid mm-hmm. car off I'd get mad about it and then be free of it my friend and the financial and the emotional benefits are going to be worth it Jade Warshaw great great hour thanks for being with me and riding shotgun as always James Childs our fearless leader in the booth and all of the fellas And you, America, we do it for you. This is your show. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jade. Look, if you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.